ready for another video with something cool I found at Walmart. This is a uh, Leonard Alien Collection Special Edition Collector Series. A uh, seven inch collectible xenomorph, fully posable alien. And uh, you can see I got the blue one. According to the back of the package, this is the Warrior Xeno, as it says. Uh, there's three figures in this line. There is a Drone Xeno and a Rana Xeno. Run, Rana! Come on, we're the only ones who can remember Logan's run. Uh, I had been really enjoying the three and three quarter inch alien figures that Lennard has been doing. Well, when I say that, I mean I've enjoyed the alien figures in their alien line. Uh, the human figures have been mainly a bunch of leftovers from the core, and uh, those are differing levels of quality. Uh, the ones that are the guys who look like they're in spacesuits are pretty good, because those are from like some kind of sci-fi line they did that had some decent articulation, but the, the, the colonial marines of that line are kind of pathetic, because they're like... Uh, five point of articulation guys like you find at the dollar store so they were pretty bad i'd been making my own colonial marines using parts from uh marauder task force i might have one handy let me see uh yeah here's one yeah here's one i happen to have handy make, make your own colonial marines with decent articulation and accurate accessories so, I even made Vasquez. Uh, I want to make Ripley eventually, but I haven't got around to it yet. Anyway, uh, I hope this doesn't mean that they're going to be shifting away from the three and three quarter inch because, like I said, I really like those, but this is pretty cool too. So, let's go ahead and open it up. And uh, let's see, how do we open up? There's a little piece of tape here. Voila. Voila. And we can just kind of, oh, is there, no, that's just where it's tucked into the cardboard. All right, so we can open it up this way, and then we'll put another little flap there, and the cardboard tray should just kind of slide out now. There we go. And uh, the packaging artwork is uh, very similar. I don't know if that's identical, but it's pretty similar to what we saw in the three and three quarter inch line. Uh, I believe that's artwork by Bernie Wrightson, the legendary Bernie Wrightson, one of my favorite comic book artists, uh, creator of Swamp Thing, along with Len Wein. And, of course, there's all these really annoying rubber bands we have to deal with here. That's why I have my X-Acto knife. There we go. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need to get the alien out. All right. And then his accessory is this little capsule that's got a face hugger wrapped up into it. I don't know if this is the same mold as the other face hugger that came with the three and three quarter inch one. Because if it is, it's all kind of scrunched up in there. You could take it out. So, but that's pretty neat. If I could see what I did with the thing, I want to say it was down on the tray underneath this table. I know I see the egg. I don't know what I did with it. Well, I'm going to put this on the tray underneath my table. So. Alright. I'm sure you guys are really fascinated with the tray underneath my table. Alright, so let's have a look at this guy. And uh, he seems to be made out of the same type of plastic as the three and three quarter inch figures. He's much larger, obviously, because he's a seven inch figure. Uh... Good news is, since uh, there's G.I. Joe classified figures, I can still have them fight G.I. Joes. I could also have them fight, you know, DC Universe Classics, or, oh, fight He-Man. Yeah, well, that works pretty well. If, uh, if they actually made a crossover between He-Man and Alien, who do you think would be the first character to die from having a chest burster burst through their chest? My money's on Beast Man. Beast Man, that seems like that would be the kind of bad luck Beast Man would have. <laughs> Maybe Merman, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, his articulation, 
is really similar to those three and three quarter inch figures if you're familiar with them. Uh, although he has some extra articulation, thankfully, since he's a larger size. For example, you can see he has elbow articulation, which has got a good range of motion to it. Looks like, uh, you know, got like a what, 90 degree angle there, almost. Uh, the wrists don't seem like they're quite as well articulated, oddly enough, because they don't seem to have this range of motion quite as well, but they still uh, turn all the way around. Uh, ball joints at the hips. Got a standard knee hinge here. Ball jointed feet. So he should be able to stand pretty well. And uh, he's got an articulated jaw, which is something I thought the uh, three and three quarter inch figures could have used. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the, again, with this one, like the tongue comes out like you would want it to. You can see the, the inner mouth kind of sculpted in there. But oddly enough, I don't think this is as detailed as it was in the three and three quarter inch figure. I think it's uh, a little more simplistic. That might have to do with uh, the articulation they had in the jaw. Like, maybe they weren't able to do that as a separate piece. Which I think that's a... It, I think what it is on the original figure is that... Uh, on the three and three quarter inch one is that the, the jaw itself is a piece that's glued on. And the mouth is kind of sculpted onto the head. And I think that that's the case here too. But since it's got the joint in there, I think they maybe weren't able to get quite as much detail onto it, which is unfortunate. Uh, it would be nice if this tail was ball-jointed, like, you maybe give that a little more articulation, but it's fine, I guess. So, uh, and you can see the, the color is pretty interesting, because, uh, much like the three and three quarter inch figures, they've molded this in, uh, a metallic sort of sheen, which looks really good. Uh, it looks like, though, that uh, it's a more complex uh, mixture to the plastic, so it's got like a little more marbling to it than those had, and it's also a much darker shade of blue than the blue alien from that line. So I think he looks really cool. Uh, it looks like also there's a little more paint detail on him. Like I think that the blades on his forearms are painted; they're kind of a greenish color. It could be possible. It could be molded in that shade of plastic, but I can't really tell. If it is, then that's the only parts on there molded in the greenish shade. That's really weird how that would work. And there's a little more, I guess there's a little more green across the, the top of his head, but it's kind of more of a sheen. Overall, I really like this figure, and uh, I might buy the others in the set, but this is this is the one that I thought was definitely the coolest one. The, the drone was kind of a sickly, pale gray color. It looked all right, but I kind of feel like that's a little light of a character. Well, I feel like that's a little light for a character like uh, the alien. I kind of feel like the darker colors work better for that. And then uh, the runner alien, which is the dog alien from Alien 3, uh, he was kind of more of a burgundy sort of color. I liked that that one came with a, a, a dog like an actual dog, and uh, that would be something if you ever get around to making a custom classified scale of Mutt, I think that would be a good Junkyard, because it looks a lot like Junkyard, like a Rottweiler or something. So, uh, I guess it's a Rottweiler. I don't I don't really know. But, uh, but yeah, this is a nice figure. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, it only costs like 10 bucks. So, you know, for, for 10 bucks, this is a really good figure. It's a lot cheaper than, you know, the NECA alien figures are, which, granted, I think those are a lot more high-quality, more realistic sculpts, more realistic paint details and things like that. But if you just want a cool-looking alien figure to sit on your shelf, it could sit with the NECAs probably just fine, I think. So, you know, maybe one of the background guys. Or, you know, if you're, you got, like, kids in your life, you know, children of your own, or, like, nieces and nephews that really like your NECA figures and you don't want to let them play with them because you don't want them to get damaged because they're not really made for kids. Well, here's one that's made for kids, and uh, they should be able to handle this one pretty well. He seems pretty sturdy. So, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for, for this episode, and we will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.